Hello and welcome to the Serial Bar Overview video. This video will introduce you to the Serial Bar game and the game interface. Serial Bar is described in the 2019 EMNLP paper titled Executing Instructions in Situated Collaborative Interactions. My name is Elaine Soar, I'm one of the authors. Serial Bar is a collaborative game where two players work together to select sets of cards and earn points. Here's what one game board looks like. Each game has a randomly generated board with a different arrangement of props and terrain. Scattered across the board are a variety of cards with multiple colorful shapes. The goal is for the players to select valid sets of three cards. A valid set has exactly three cards with this distinct color, shape, and number. For example, a set with one red heart, two blue stars, and three yellow circles is a valid set. A set with one red heart, two blue stars, and three blue diamonds is not, because two of those cards have the same color, in this case, blue. The players move around the board to activate and deactivate cards. When the activated cards form a valid set, the players earn a point and the activated cards are replaced with three random new cards. The board is a hex grid, meaning there are six possible rotations for each player, east and west, northeast and northwest, and southeast and southwest. Players can rotate right and left and move forward and backward. Some props and terrains are obstacles. The players can't move through lakes or mountains, or through props like trees and houses. There are two players in the game. The leader observes the entire game board, which allows them to plan which cards to select next so the players can earn another point. The leader decides which cards should be reached by the leader and which by the follower. The leader gives instructions to the follower using natural language. The leader also moves around the board to collect cards themselves. The follower's job is to follow the leader's instructions to the best of their ability. The follower doesn't respond back to the leader with natural language. They only have access to a first-person view, meaning they should only select the cards specified by the leader or they might mess up the leader's plan for earning the next point. The players take turns. During the leader's turn, they can move up to five steps and give instructions. During the follower's turn, they can move up to ten steps, which is farther than the leader. Because the follower can move farther, the leader can give them more complex tasks or ask them to reach cards that are far away. To play the game successfully, players must coordinate with one another. Now we'll see an example of some gameplay. I'll describe the interface and some more details about the game. During the rest of the video, I will be switching between the leader and follower perspectives. This button on the top right will indicate which view you are currently seeing. The game starts with players connecting with each other. Players are randomly paired and randomly assigned the role of either leader or follower. A new map is generated, meaning that props like trees or houses, terrain like grass or the paths, and cards are randomly placed on the board. The players are also randomly placed on the board. In this game, the leader started in the middle of the board near a red house and a pine tree, and the follower is near a yellow house in the bottom left. The game begins with the leader's turn. They have up to 45 seconds in their turn to plan which cards to get, give instructions, and move towards cards themselves. The leader can see the whole map. They can also see information about the game, such as the score, the time remaining in their turn, the number of moves they have left during this turn, and the number of turns remaining until the end of the game. Recall that a valid set has three cards with distinct color, shape, and number. In this case, the leader plans to get the set with a single yellow cross, two pink stars, and three red stripes. The leader will get the first two cards while the follower will get the red stripes. The leader can also see what the follower can see. This helps them write instructions that are easier for the follower to understand with respect to what they can currently see. The leader uses the command window to write commands. In this case, the first instruction is grab the three red stripes behind you. When an instruction is sent, it enters the command window. This command is marked with the tag current, meaning that the follower is currently following this command. 
The leader moves on top of the yellow cross card and it gets a blue outline showing that it's selected. Now that the leader is done moving and writing an instruction, they can end their turn by pressing the end turn button. Then it becomes the follower's turn. We're now seeing the game from the follower's perspective. The follower only has a first person view of the game. In addition to the information the leader sees about the game, they have access to the currently followed instruction and previously completed instructions in the command window. The follower only has 15 seconds per turn, so they have to pay attention and move quickly. The follower follows the instruction, grab the three red stripes behind you. When the follower grabs the red stripes, they mark the instruction as done, which in this case ends their turn because there are no more instructions to follow. This button is used to align instructions to the follower actions taken to complete them. So we don't want followers taking actions that don't align to any instruction. Both players now see that the command is marked as done. Now the leader grabs the last card in the set, the two pink stars. When the selected cards make a valid set, a few things happen. First, and most importantly, the players earn a point. The cards making up the set disappear, and new cards randomly appear on the board. Also, the players earn extra turns so they can continue playing for longer. This means that we get more data from games where the players are collaborating efficiently. Now that new cards appeared on the board, the leader has to play in the next set. In this case, the leader plans to get the three yellow squares, two red stripes, and one black triangle. Their first instruction is turn to your right and grab the three yellow squares near the mountain. The follower can make 10 moves per turn. During this turn, the follower successfully grabs the yellow squares, but because they've run out of moves, their turn automatically ends before they can mark the instruction as complete. This isn't a problem though, because at the beginning of the next turn, they can mark the instruction as complete. The leader is limited to five moves per turn. When they run out of moves, their turn doesn't end because they may still want to write instructions to the follower. Even though the follower hasn't completed the current instruction, the leader can send new instructions. In this case, turn to your right and go around the trees to get the two red stripes. This instruction appears only to the leader, not the follower. The leader sees the instruction with the tag, not sent. Once the follower's turn begins, they mark the current instruction as complete, and the newest one appears. It's marked as current for both players now. Now the players have two points. Leaders can send as many instructions as they want per turn. Now the leader stepped on a card that makes an invalid set. This is invalid for two reasons. The colors are the same and the counts are the same. No matter what additional cards are selected, this will never make a valid set. Only the leader can see when the currently selected cards are invalid. Letting the follower know when the current set is invalid often results in them trying to make up their own plan to fix it. But we only want the leader to reason about which card to select, even if it's to fix a mistake. Letting the follower know when the current set is invalid often results in them trying to make up their own plan to fix it. But we want only the leader to reason about which cards to select, even if it is to fix a mistake. However, it's an easy fix. To unselect a card, a player just has to step on it again. Sometimes cards are obscured by objects. The leader can change the camera view to an overhead one to see the cards better. In this case, there were a few cards behind the mountain that the leader couldn't see very well. Thanks for watching. We hope this video was informative. Be sure to check out our other videos with recordings of games played between two humans and between a human and the trained follower. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment or email us.